Hi, I'm Brendan Wing, this is Fish TV. Recently, we had another loss of life on our beloved Western Port. And although it's a beautiful, calm bay most of the time, it's also very, very treacherous at times because of the strong currents. So when the wind works against the currents, it gets pretty bloody gnarly. And this, this recent event got me thinking, you know, I'm always out here in this little boat now and I've got the young fella with me all the time. And I need to take safety a lot more serious. And I often wonder in my head, what's gonna happen one day if I ever go overboard? What would happen? Could I swim back to the boat? Could I climb in the boat? You know, what happens if a man does go overboard in Western Port when you're an anchor? You've got four knots of current running sometimes. So I got to thinking, we need to actually go and film something so everyone can benefit from the information generated from these tests. So that's right, we're out here doing some tests today. And during the week, I put the call out to some friends. So we need you all to get on board. So I'm just going to put a big shout out right now to Peter Ferguson and the team at Menace Marine who got behind this project and hooked us up with all the latest safety gear to make sure that we are safe out on the water. And now we're going to share some pretty amazing tests of what happens uh, in Westerport when shit goes wrong. And we're going to call this episode Man Overboard. check the tides it's not a big tide today it's a medium tide literally on the on the light side of medium so have a look at the current that you're dealing with in Western Port guys I need you to have a look at this first mm Okay, guys, this is the north arm. The ocean's around that bend. That's a sandy point. That's cows on Phillip Island. Tortoise head French Island, okay? Safety boat's gonna move back a little bit now. Now, we're gonna go in clothed, unlife jacketed. Yeah. It's a real scenario. Yeah. Like if you actually went in the drink. So, we'll get all the cameras ready. And then what are we gonna do? Drop him back in again with the life jacket on? Yeah, we'll do a few different tests. This is a clothed summer fisherman, falls in the boat. No, 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 we'll, no, we'll do the, the blue ones, a manual. So, test one, Adrian's just fishing, he's on his own, he's not wearing his life jacket, and he falls in with his clothes on into Western Port. He's a very fit bloke, he's got a slight injury, he's clipped, his wings clipped. Can he save himself? And here's the other thing, you can't just jump in, you have to fall in. So you have to go in face first at the back of the boat, because most of the time you're gonna be at the back of the boat. And then he has to right himself and get back to the boat into this current. Here's test number one. All right, so look at the current. That is really dangerous. And we take it for granted that if you know if we fall in, we're gonna swim back to the boat in Western Port. Let's see what happens if you actually fall in and you haven't got a life jacket on. All right, so watch you down the back there. You're gonna be playing around trying to get a snapper. Yeah. Good luck, champ. Oh no, nice knowing you. Oh, oh. oh shit, he's in. Get back to the boat. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. No chance. You're sort of making it in there. <laughs> uh oh. Oh boy, Can you, you couldn't do that? No. I was actually trying. And that's without a life jacket. Right now, Washo is, is flowing out to sea and he's 50 metres already behind the boat. He's gone. There you go. Don't fall in in Western Port. Now imagine if that was night. He was on his own, didn't have a life jacket on. He's gone. That few seconds made it so he could got a distance that he couldn't, he couldn't recover from. Wow. That ain't me. I fish solo a lot at night. That just scared the hell out of me. Really? Yeah. I always wear a jacket when I'm alone at night, particularly. That just shows. Well, look at that. He's and I gone. can't. I can't swim. How about that? 
Where is he? Oh, he's 80 metres now. 100. More. There you go, folks. Wow. Now, you spoke about earlier. You said about earlier, maybe, Brendan, having a rope that you could throw 50 metres of rope out to someone. He's gone before you got the rope ready. Well, if you have a bucket with a rope in it, you can throw. Yeah. Apparently, you could, might be able to save someone. The quickest thing right now, guys, not pull up my anchor. If I'm with him and my mate goes overboard, first thing you do, knife, cut that anchor. Don't ever try to pull it up. Even if you've got a motor, just cut it and go as fast as you can. And chase your mate. Look at him. He is gone. Tycon boys. Look at you with your bloody fancy glasses and your fancy cap. How'd you go, Washo? Yeah, good, mate. Is it too cold? No, it was actually all right. So, just just think about that for a second. If that was real life, you're in a whole heap of shit. Yeah, but I actually think, this is my opinion, the current, without a life jacket, the current kept me afloat. Because you're ripping through the water. Right. We're going to get you to do it again. But this time, just hold your GoPro on yeah. and see if you can come up and get straight back to the boat. I want to actually see if you can do it. I want some hope for people that if they react quick, they can at least grab something at the back of the boat. You with me? Yeah, you notice when I did start swimming, I just stayed even. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't get an inch. Do you realise that it's not even full tide yet and it's <laughs> not even a big tide? That's the yeah. problem. All right, mate, when you're ready. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, he's banged his head. He's probably unconscious. Straight back to the boat, Washo. <laughs> All right. So I was able to grab the boat. What is if you let go and just go back one metre? Uh, go, go, go. Just uh, one metre. Uh, uh, you got a sec, oh. you got a split second to grab onto something, don't you? Yeah. Hey Dave, have you got a rope on board? Yeah. We might grab that off yet. I've got an idea as a safety idea for these boats. So this sits in the back of the boat, right? Yep. Oh, this ready to ready to throw. You put a float on it. I don't think it really matters. <laughs> we're gonna just we're gonna keep you safe now. Yep. So no matter what happens now, you got a life jacket. So yep. let's hope nothing. But happens. I'm not inflating it until. It, unless no, unless you have to. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the next job is let's say there's two of us fishing and my mate goes overboard. Yeah. I want you to get back about four meters beyond the boat. Yeah. Where you can't get to the point where you can't get back. I think any more than the media, you're not getting back. Okay. Then I'm gonna th Pete's gonna throw you that rope, not throw it to you, but throw it past him, okay? He's gonna grab onto the rope and then see if he's got the power to pull himself back to the boat. All, All right, you ready, Pete? You gotta sit there, you gotta be ready to react when, you when he falls. All right, just uh, hold, your hat, hold, hold, your, hold, hold your hat, hold your hat. Man overboard, man Come overboard. Oh. Grab the rope. Oh, lucky I had this rope. Oh my God, it's like water skiing. Can you get back though? Pretty easy? Yeah. So that's, that's not a bad to idea, is it? To run a rope, ready, if you've got kids on board, stuff like that, something they can grab onto. So that's a safety idea. So if you us here, just coming up with what we're coming up with, the things you just might have laying around in the boat. All right. Now the tide's picking up. <laughs> That was the easiest of the options. Yes, having an emergency rope ready. Yeah. And it was no no bother to grab. You could just have it sitting idea. in the bucket, couldn't you? That could be 30 or 40 metres long. Just an old anchor rope. If you put a new anchor rope on, sitting in the back, easy. Yep. Yeah, pretty good safety idea, actually. There you go. Straight up, right? You see him struggle. We're gonna we're gonna give him one last shot, right? And the last shot today is, and remember this is only part one. Next week we're gonna take it to a whole new level. We're going to put some really interesting uh, factors into the equation and see what we can do next week. But right now, we're going to give him one last shot, and he has to do his absolute best to get back to the boat, and he cannot give up. His life is on the line. And then if it fails, Adrian, the sign of failure is you get to pull that cord. <laughs> All right, mate? All right, mate. We've already established, Pete, that if we had a 50-metre length or even a 30-metre length of rope in a bucket, yep. you could save someone's life. Oh, hell yeah, very fast. All right, you just, just make sure it's secured that it can't tangle up in your prop. If right. throw it over. Yeah. And of course, this is the fail safe at the end. When everything goes wrong and you are on your own and no one can save you and it is night, this is the thing that's going to save your life, mate. So you're going over, Pete's going to fail up the rope, he's not going to get it to you in time, but you have to put everything in, you can't give up. 
Yeah. You cannot give up, all right? I'll try my best. The minute <laughs> I hear that light jacket goes, means you failed. <laughs> the tide is actually humming now, mate. Gently drift down the stream. Yeah. All right. Gently down the <laughs> stream. When you're ready, old boy. All right. He's in! Man overboard, Pete! I'm running out of gas! So that's our demo's done. And as you saw straight up, in that very first test, when there was no rope, and man overboard gets just five minutes behind the boat, he's in trouble, in medium current. If he's on his own at night, the only thing we're gonna find is an empty boat on the news. That's what's at stake out here. So I think it's, it's very important that in times of risk, like night fishing, fishing solo, fishing in rough weather, you should always have PFDs either on or close at hand. Now we're all familiar with the jackets that we've had on the show for years. We're all familiar with normal yoke style PFDs. We're gonna show you something else now that really appeals to me because what I hate about PF, the, the yoke styles is they're cumbersome and, they, and, they, and they're around your neck all day and they're really annoying. I'm not saying don't wear it, it's just, just just know that there's now another option and I'm going to get Peter to show you what that option is now. There's a third option. Okay, it's 40 degrees. No one wants to wear a yoke or a jacket. It's too hot. This keeps me legal and still keeps me cool. Wear it on my belt all day long. I end up in the water. I just literally slide that around here. Open it up. Pull out the life jacket. Just like an aeroplane, when they show you on an aeroplane, slide it over your head. Strap comes around between your legs. On the back of the bag is another clip. That secures it on there. Now jacket is fully ready to use. Whistles, etc. here, manual inflator. Basically, just hold the cylinder here, pull string. And there I am, drifting away. And that's perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. PFD1, 150 Newton rated jacket, I'm done. And just sits on your pocket. Yep, Not in the way in the annoying you all day like those bloody other things. Nah, and from here I can adjust it. If that's too tight like it is at the moment, I can adjust that to give me a bit more room. Float around. Yeah. Save. Good stuff, mate. Thank you. All right, huge shout out to Menace Marine. Thank you very much for getting on board and helping get the message out there. We don't want to hear any more lost souls with someone going overboard in, in Western Port. It's very serious. And I've... Uh, it took me 47 years to really cotton on to how, to how uh, important it is to be safe out here. So you'll know that every time FT, FV Tilly's out on the water chasing marlin or swords or tuna or even just the local elephant sharks, whatever it is, we'll have all the right safety gear on board. And that's really, really good to know that that hip belt one is now available. Because one of the things that really annoyed me about um, wearing yokes is how uncomfortable they are all day wearing them. So that's an awesome thing. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Hope you really enjoyed. Now. Next thing, part two is going to be extremely exciting. If you enjoyed this one, wait till you watch part two when Adrian's going back in the drink and he's going to have a challenge to save his life. Keep an eye for that over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching. Hey, you Dave, Dave, you got a copy, mate? Just going to test out the new icon. Yeah, I got you, buddy. She sounds pretty good. All right, mate, you're loud and clear on this one, which is a far cry from that last one we tried. Good to know we've got a radio as well now, but that's another subject for another day. We'll catch up with you soon. See you up on the squid. All right, prepare to be dominated. Yes, just like the other day. Yes, that was a domination, if I believe. Youfish TV is proudly brought to you by fighttackle.com.au. Gamakatsu Hooks by Frogleys Offshore, Mercury Marine Australia, 
Menace Marine and Immersion Apparel. We need a winch on Tilly. Is anyone going to save us? This is just not right. We've got Lone Star Marine anchor, Lone Star Marine bowsprit, Lone Star Marine rope, all generously given to us by Mulkey, but it's not the bit we need. Shit. Wouldn't like to be doing this on my own. I've got Peter keeping the boat in gear. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> 